So now we're looking at acceleration as a function of position. First of all, acceleration can always be written as dv over dt. Right, this is just the definition of acceleration. It is the rate of change of velocity. But in our case, we have a function of acceleration that's given in terms of s. So we have a of s, right? This is acceleration as a function of position. Now the way that we solve these problems is first of all, we'll take the side, we'll multiply the top and bottom by ds. We get ds. We've been doing this in the previous videos. Now because this is multiplication, we can just switch these order around a little bit and we will get dv over ds times ds over dt. Hopefully you recognize this by now, that ds over dt is equal to v, right? Velocity is simply the rate of change of position, or we could say ds dt. So what we can do is we can rewrite that again. We'll say that this is all equal to dv ds times velocity. So now what we can do is we'll just write it down here to be a little more clean. We have acceleration as a function of position is equal to dv over ds times v. Now what we can do is we can take this ds and multiply it up here to get it to this side. So we will get acceleration as a function of position, so as ds is equal to v dv. Now what we do is we just integrate both sides. We integrate the left side with respect to s from s0 to s. We integrate the right side with respect to v from v0 to v. And if we actually had a function, uh, accelerate, an acceleration function that would be given in a problem, we would be easily able to solve this. We could simplify this. Um, it's not really necessary because we don't actually, can't really take this any farther um, without knowing what the acceleration is. But what we can do is this this statement here, well, once we, if we had numbers, it would reduce to giving us a, a function for velocity. And it's actually, the, it would give us velocity in terms of s, so we would get v of s. All right, so now what we can do, that would, that would give us our velocity that we were looking for. If we were looking for time, then what we can do is we can take this function, v of s, and here we'll come down over here, and we can, well, first of all, we know that velocity is always going to be equal to ds over dt. Okay, and so this is going to be equal, in this case, velocity is in terms of s. So we would have v of s, right? Or we could put the s there if we wanted to, I suppose. So anyways, all we would have to do now is do a separation of variables. So this would become ds over velocity as a function of s is equal to dt. Then what we do is integrate both sides. We get from s naught to s, right? We're integrating with respect to s, the right side, from t naught to t. And from here, if we solve this, if we actually had this function, which we would actually need this function to get, um, we would actually be able to find position as a function of time. So this is just the general terms, or the general method for how to solve these problems. Um, Join me in the next video and we'll go over an actual example with real numbers and hopefully it makes more sense.